A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. AI algorithms make important decisions about you all the time, like how much you should pay for car insurance or whether or not you get that job interview. But what happens when these machines are built with human bias coded into their systems? Technologist Kriti Sharma explores how the lack of diversity in tech is creeping into our AI, offering three ways we can start making more ethical algorithms. Algorithms are being used all the time to make decisions about who we are and what we want. Some of the women in this room will know what I'm talking about. If you've been made to sit through those pregnancy test adverts on YouTube like a thousand times, or you've scrolled past adverts of fertility clinics on your Facebook um, feed, or in my case, Indian marriage bureaus. (laughs) But AI isn't just being used to make decisions about what products we want to buy or which show we want to binge watch next. I wonder how you'd feel about someone who thought things like this. A black or Latino person is less likely than a white person to pay off their loan on time. A person called John makes a better programmer than a person called Mary. A black man is more likely to be a repeat offender than a white man. You're probably thinking, wow, that sounds like a pretty sexist, racist person, right? These are some real decisions that AI has made very recently based on the biases it has learned from us, from the humans. AI is being used to help decide whether or not you get that job interview, how much you pay for your car insurance, how good your credit score is, and even what rating you get in your annual performance review. But these decisions are all being filtered through its assumptions about our identity, our race, our gender, our age. How is that happening? Now, imagine an AI is helping a hiring manager find the next tech leader in the company. So far, the manager has been hiring mostly men. So the AI learns men are more likely to be programmers than women. And it's a very short leap from there to men make better programmers than women. We have reinforced our own bias into the AI, and now it's screening out female candidates. Hang on, if a human hiring manager did that, we'd be outraged, we wouldn't allow it. This kind of gender discrimination is not okay. And yet somehow, AI has become above the law because a machine made the decision. That's not it. We are also reinforcing our bias in how we interact with AI. How often do you use a voice assistant like Siri, Alexa, or even Cortana? They're designed to be your obedient servants, turning your lights on and off, ordering your shopping. You get male AIs too, but they tend to be more high-powered, like IBM Watson making business decisions, Salesforce science team, or Ross, the robot lawyer. The poor robots, even they suffer from sexism in the workplace. (laughs) Think about how these two things combine and affect a kid growing up in today's world around AI. So they're doing some research for a school project, and they Google images of CEO. The algorithm shows them results of mostly men. And now they Google personal assistant. As you can guess, it shows them mostly females. And then they want to put on some music and maybe order some food. And now they're barking orders at a female voice obedient obedient female voice assistant. Some of our brightest minds are creating this technology today. Technology that they could have created in any way they wanted. And yet, they've chosen to create it in the style of 1950s Mad Men secretary. Yay! But okay, don't worry, this is not going to end with me telling you that we're all heading towards sexist, racist machines running the world. The good news about AI 
is that it is entirely within our control. We get to teach the right values, the right ethics to AI. So there are three things we can do. One, we can be aware of our own biases and the bias in machines around us. Two, we can make sure there are diverse teams building this technology. And three, we have to give it diverse experiences to learn from. What we really need to do to make AI better is bring people from all kinds of backgrounds. We need people who can write and tell stories to help us create personalities of AI. We need people who can solve problems. We need people who face different challenges. And we need people who can tell us what are the real issues that need fixing and help us find ways that technology can actually fix it. Because when people from diverse backgrounds come together, when we build things in the right way, the possibilities are limitless. So I hope I leave you thinking about two things. First, I hope you leave thinking about bias today and that the next time you scroll past an advert that assumes you are interested in fertility clinics or online betting websites, that you think and remember that the same technology is assuming that a black man will reoffend, or that a woman is more likely to be a personal assistant than a CEO. And I hope that reminds you that we need to do something about it. And second, I hope you think about the fact that you don't need to look a certain way or have a certain background in engineering or technology to create AI, which is going to be a phenomenal force for our future. You don't need to look like a Mark Zuckerberg. You can look like me. And it is up to all of us in this room to convince the governments and the corporations to build AI technology for everyone, including the edge cases and for us all to get education about this phenomenal technology in the future. Because if we do that, then we've only just scratched the surface of what we can achieve with AI. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Warwickshire, England. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Warwick. Want to listen to more TEDx Talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Matosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.